Okay guys, welcome to another episode of the Book of Unwritten Tales. <clears throat> Last time you kind of saw me fail at uh, absolutely everything. Which is uh, really no surprise. But uh, yeah, I'm not very good at uh, stuff. But hopefully I'll be better this time around. And apparently we're still in the prologues, which, uh, I guess makes sense. But, uh, I thought we'd get somewhere farther than that. And we're back as the elf chick. Look at the stove. I didn't know I could, uh, look at things else. large brick fireplace. The fire grates on the outside, not inside the house. That's a bit unusual. Yeah. It does make sense if the professor doesn't wish to have an open fire inside. No, oh, well, I guess, but. A pile of logs. There is no way that MacGuffin will get through the winter with such a small amount. Not even autumn. Oh, I guess I can take some. I didn't realize I could. Three should be enough. Three for the stove. Why? Going, they'll burn for a few hours. So I don't know why I'm going to I do that. This is a pretty basic millstone. Grain is tipped into the hole above, and you then turn the upper stone. The flour then comes out of the side. Okay. Um, the watering can. An old watering can made out of metal. It's small even by gremlin standards. Apparently, I can take that. I'm already taking items that aren't mine. <laughs> I'd say this is a pretty basic with the flower. Oh, okay. Uh, what about the well? The groundwater is only a few meters down in this region. Presumably, the well isn't very deep. Uh, maybe. I should wind up the rope first. Oh. The well rope is fastened to the windlass. Doesn't look particularly strong. The well rope is. I should wind up the rope first. Eh. Okay, well, there goes that plan. I can speak with Cheap Cheap. Okay. And what kind of artifact might this be about? Though I'm pretty sure that's not how you spell, out, spell artifact. Aren't you afraid of the scarecrow at all? Why is that scarecrow not scaring you? Yes, certainly. And how? Normally, you're the first to take flight. Okay. Do you have any idea which artifact could be so powerful that it could make someone into the ruler of the world? No, that's been lost to the depths of the ocean. No, that's been thrown back into the same fire that was used to forge it. <laughs> no, I haven't got a clue. It must be something that no one bargained for. Something that no one has ever looked for. It'll be in the Gremlins book. If only I had it already. Good luck, little one. And don't get up to any mischief. I sure know there are references, though. A tatty wonky scare. Lord of the Rings references everywhere. It's nibbled by mice. But the hat has something about it. The hat. A scarecrow that doesn't even scare Cheap Cheap is clearly of no use whatsoever. I guess. Um. Well, I might as well enter the house. There doesn't seem to be much else I can do. Uh, right then. Uh, look at the chaos. Typical bachelor. Everything in a mess. Plates, pots, cups, covered with a sticky mixture of dust and fat. Dead flies. All oh, yuck. Delicious. <laughs> um. Look at the small silver shield. old-fashioned shield. The inside is highly polished. Apparently I can take that. Well, I, uh, don't know what I'd use it for. The back of the fireplace. When MacGuffin wanted to heat his food up, he just needed to put it into one of those little stoves. Oh, okay. Oh, a wooden a vessel. A carpenter's cup. 
It looks old. I guess I can't take it. Um, look at the stone pillar. Looks like the base for a statue. It's made out of stone and it's covered with strange characters. Examine the socket. There's a six-sided indentation on the base. Perhaps the mounting for a statue. Oh. Hmm. Okay, not that. A uh, wooden box. A stone casket placed in a wooden box. The box looks very cheap. It could be one of those storage containers. The stone chest is decorated with two angels and has writing on it too. I can't read it. Open? Apparently I can open it. What's likely to happen, eh? Sand. Hmm. Is it me? Or has it just got much warmer in here? The chest is filled to the brim with fine sand. I haven't got a clue what else might be in there. I can hardly sift my way through the sand with my hand. Well, why not? A large handwritten book. It looks like it's been used a lot. Read it. MacGuffin it's had a cutscene with it. Perhaps I'll find some hints about the cellar. Let's take a closer look. Who would have ever thought that it would fall to someone like me, an old archaeologist, to stop this madness? And I didn't find the key to it on one of my expeditions, not in dark dungeons or in fiery mountains. Oh no, I discovered the answer in an old book. He must mean the book that was hidden in the cellar, in which the information about the artifact's whereabouts is written. Hmm. The notes end mid-sentence. I wonder why I haven't heard anything from Archmage Alistair yet. I sent Beetle out with a message for him yesterday morning. I hope nothing has... That was the last entry. There are others before it. What's this at the beginning of this page? Hmm. Today I have been examining the books that I bought back from the Grindle Mountains. Amongst them was a book about herbs and tinctures. An old herbalist was adamant that I would find a recipe to cure my cold feet in it. What a disappointment though. Just superstitious nonsense about frog eyes and wool socks. <laughs> I was just about to burn the book when I noticed that the volume contained other things. A disturbing tale of a tragic relationship between a magician and his pet sheep Boris as well as a travel log written by a fairy explorer. Uh -oh. The travel log described how the explorer landed on an island in the West Seas while searching for undiscovered fairy tribes. He created several very beautiful sketches of the temple ruins that can be found on that island. I will use these to entertain myself and translate the runes he drew. The <laughs> next entry was made two days later. It's only barely legible. The gremlin appears to have been very excited. <laughs> it must be the entrance. The wrath of the gods caused the temple to sink into the ocean, of course. But not all, not all. Ye gods, my hands are still shaken despite the fact that Beetle made me a calming herbal tea before he left. Good old Beetle, he has obviously got no clue how significant my discovery is. I have sent him to Master Alistair, the Archmage oh. of the Humans, he is to hand him a sealed letter. Tomorrow, tomorrow Master Alistair will arrive, and I can unburden myself of this terrible responsibility. I will not be able to sleep a wink. And oh. next, there's the last entry that I read out before. There's nothing else there. That was before he went to... He sent Beetle away. A dragon skull. It could have been a horn tail. Nasty creatures. But there are very few around these days. The last of them are now working almost exclusively as beasts of burden. They've not just lost their viciousness, they've lost their pride too. Well, that's depressing. Maybe the books on books, the shelf. Books, books, and more books. Most are ancient tomes. They appear to be written in just about every language. I could probably use some of them to translate some of this stuff. The book that MacGuffin told me about is hidden in the cellar. These books aren't of interest. Oh, but... Alright. I think these are all the things that the professor uses on his digs. A brush, a little shovel, a sieve. Looks like it. Might as well grab some of the stuff that's there. I'll take the sieve. The rest looks pretty useless. 
Don't know what the sieve could be used. Oh, the sieve could be used because of the sand. Let's do that then. There is something in there. A little brass key. A key? What could I even use a key for? Look at the stone head. A strange stone head. It's been roughly hewn but has a few fine embellishments. Mm. A the little wooden, wooden box. box. Doesn't look like an antique or anything particularly valuable. It has beautiful workmanship though. One. So I can open the box, but it probably needs the little key. What was inside? Let's see. There's a bit of paper in the box. The paper's densely covered with writing. Deus Ex Machina. The ghost and the machine is the heading. Okay. There's also a drawing of a stone figure. At its feet is a vessel containing liquid. Hmm. Let's take a look. The ghost in the machine is wise to all the secrets of this house. That's what's written here. Hmm. Blah, blah. Pour the fuel into the bowl at the foot of the machine to awaken the ghost. Fuel? Ah, oh, here. Grind the beans and tip the powder into boiling water, then pour the mixture into the bowl. We've already had that bit. You'll get the beans from the machine. Hmm, strange. A machine that's meant to be familiar with all the secrets of the house. Huh. Well... If I could find some beans, that would uh, be useful. One of the Those sarcophagus. Like very ancient sarcophagus. Don't have any. Strange. Well, maybe Everything not beans, but... Like a door. Something else, maybe. Hello. Shame. Just a stinky mummy. But that stinky what mummy talks. And I know that from what the videos on Steam. Artima? What the... Did you... Um... Did you just speak? Uh... You speak? Me? No. No. Well, uh... Well, uh yes, yes, you do, you do quite, quite obviously. What is obvious? That you, that you can, can and do speak. speak. But of course. You just said, you that, said you that you didn't. Why are you being so strange, Mortimer? I... I'm not Mortimer. Where is Mortimer? You mean McGuffin, the Gremlin archaeologist who lives here, yes? Yeah, yes? What? Mortimer. He doesn't even know of him. Yes? You're called Mortimer? No, of course not. Who's Mortimer then? Finished with this conversation. I think you are slowly losing your marbles, Mortimer. I don't know how much help that guy is going to be. Sarcophagus lacks oxygen. <laughs> okay, so beans. Frame on the wall. Hmm. Would appear to be a mirror frame. There are still a few broken shards of the old mirror around the edges. The mirror's turned so it reflects the fireplace. Strange. Um I wonder if the mirror is needed then. But, um, where would I find beans? I'm definitely not tidying up here. Why hasn't the Gremlin's Companion sorted this out? The Gremlin's Companion might be in some danger. In that the may tub, be why. About half full of water. Oh, great. This has the Professor's washing floating around in it. White shirts, grey socks, red underpants. Oh, ew. But, um... Okay, no. I didn't think so. Um... Where would I find beans? The only character that talks is this thing, so must be that. But who is Mortimer? Because I don't know who that is, and I don't know who you are either. So good to see you, Mortimer. But clearly, their A eyesight very isn't good at all. Person was just here, insisting that they were you. That was me. You, Mortimer. Why did you pretend to be you? That doesn't make any sense. Exactly. Have you done something to your hair? You look so different. Are you seriously mistaking me for a meter-high wrinkly bald old gremlin? 
Oh, don't be so hard on yourself, Mortimer. Look at me. I've seen better days, too. <laughs> I am not, not Mortimer. Mortimer. Mortimer, Mortimer sent, sent me. me. I'm looking, I'm for, looking a for a secret cellar. cellar. Can you tell me how I can get into the cellar? Into the cellar? Of course. Of course. And, and where is where's the, cellar? the cellar? What cellar do you mean? <laughs> what? What? This is getting you us nowhere. Grown, Mortimer. Yes, yes. Oh, how we laugh. <sighs> the cellar's probably outside, to be honest. I already read the Gremlin's diary and it isn't. Oh, pile of documents. Hmm, old parchment and yellowing papers, filled with texts in many different foreign languages. Adonish and Western, Quenya and Sindarin, and technical drawings in Kuzdol. Those could be of some help. Yes, um. In unimaginably valuable documents. Um. Note from out of the box. I, I didn't what read sort it. Of machine is being talked about here. The paper indicates some kind of stone figure. All the rest is absolutely of no use to me at all without the machine. Well, the stone figure is obviously that thing. But, um... Or, I think... Let's see what's outside. Maybe there's a way to do things. Um... Look at the undergrowth. There's got to be areas I can go to. There's a stone to. in the undergrowth. There's something written on it, but I can't see what it is. That could be a little gravestone. Oh, that, that'd be a little creepy. I can't even. remove the undergrowth with my bare hands. It's very dense and has thorns. Hmm. Huh. Well, I don't have anything. Yeah, that's of no help over there. Um, what's over here? Anything over here at all? I can't go way over here? No? Um, oh, we could look at something. Chimney. A daring structure. And just like the whole house, pretty wonky. Doesn't look as if it'll last long. Yeah, I guess that does look pretty skeptical. But, um, oh, the flower pot. An upturned flower pot made of clay. There's a stone under it. Hmm, that could be a fire stone. That's coming with me. Presumably, the professor wanted to prevent the stone getting wet. Um... It's flint. I can use I it in the fire. Logs just with a fire stone. I need something that lights easily to get the fire started properly. You mean these? The documents that are ridiculously important? <laughs> They'll burn well. They're dry as bone. <laughs> oh, man. I'll give it a go. Well, there goes the important documents. A crackling fire burns in the hearth. Oh, how nice. Okay, well, I've got that, I guess. But what I should what I do sort next? The machine is being talked about here. The paper indicates some kind of stone figure. All the rest is absolutely of no use to me at all without the machine. But, um, I don't know where the machine is. I wonder if I talk to you again if you'll be of some assistance. Well, that's just great. Hello again. You have a spider hanging from your mouth this time. Hello, Mortimer. Unless that was always yes. there. Now listen, I have to find the secret cellar and I think you might be able to help me. So please, pull yourself together. Of course. Of course. <laughs> That's good. Now, I have a few questions for you. Um... Do you know anything about the secret Can door in the cellar? Can you tell where the secret door is and how to open it? Oh, you are getting forgetful, Mortimer. Yes, exactly. So help me out here. How do I open that secret door again? 
What secret door? Oh, God. This is gradually ceasing to be funny. What? That. The secret door to the cellar. How can I open it? You always fiddle around with that thing there, that stone figure, and then the secret door opens and, and you disappear somewhere. Mm. And exactly where does more... Uh, do I go then? How should I know? I haven't left my sarcophagus for 4,000 years. Oh, no geez. wonder you're a little soft in the head. You are not Mortimer. Why are you pretending to be Mortimer? I'm tired enough. Bye. Okay. So that wasn't much help. But maybe no. I'll just examine it again. There's a six-sided indentation on the base. Perhaps the mounting for a statue. But mm. What statue? <laughs> That's the problem. What about the wooden box? Wait, there is something else. There's a six-sided flat stone hidden under the paper. Oh? There's something a bit like a knob on the top of it. Ah! There. There we go. Let's see. Fits perfectly. I wonder if I... Woohoo! I got it! How pretty. Now what is this? Uh, look at the statue. Ooh, this must be the ominous machine which is reputed to have a ghost living in it. The vessel at its base must be for fuel. The statue has small holes in its nose, and it appears that the mouth could be opened. Okay. I could talk to something. Talk to the machine. Oh. The vessel's a few centimeters deep and empty. There are some brown stains on the bottom. Uh, Hello? You in there? Ghost? Give me beans for your draft. That, uh... <clears throat> Oh, mighty ghost in the machine. Give me the beans for your delicious, godly draft. Let's look at it this way. If you don't give me the beans, then I won't be able to prepare your stupid draft. And that won't be of any use to anyone. Oh, hey. There we go. Why the wait? Uh, put the beads in the cup. Where do I? What do I do with the beans now? Beans all present and correct. And what was that about the fuel again? Ah, oh, yes, here. Grind the beans and pour the powder into boiling water. Okay. I guess I don't put them in there. Um. Um, but where would I grind the beans? Oh, I think I know. Outside. There is a way to grind grain outside, so maybe that's where I grind the beans. Yeah, there we go. Now all I would need is the water. After I grind the beans. The beans are being ground to powder. That's it. Okay, so I've got the bean powder. Now I just need the water. I should wind up the rope first. But how do I wind up the rope? Oh. Crank the handle. Hmm. That was suspiciously easy. Yeah. The rope. Oh no. What about the rope? What about the rope? The rope is broken. Presumably the years spent soaked in water have rotted it away. Oh well, now what do I do then? That should hold. Okay. Let's give it a whirl. Okay. It worked. This means that I have a gremlin watering can full of water. Okay. So I've got the water, I just have to boil it now. But um how do I do that? Those don't... 
Better not. The instructions say that the water should be boiling before the powder can be put in there. But how do I boil the water? A swinging metal frame. You can hang pots or something of that sort onto it and then swing it over the fire. Oh. I guess like that. Okay. The watering can with the cold well water is hanging on the metal arm. Good, uh, I guess. Oh, turn so that it, um, uh... Let's see. There. Now it should boil and uh, then I can put the powder in. The water's boiling. Okay, take it back. A watering can full of hot water. And then put that Very in there. Well. Hmm, the water's turning brown. And it smells... Mmm, lovely. That's the fuel for the machine sorted. I bet it's coffee. I'm willing to bet that what I just made was coffee. And, um... Examine the machine. And then... I'm going to tired of this whole effort's in vain. Ah! Uh, hello? You there, ghost. I have to find the secret cellar. Will you help me? What? What's going on? Uh... What? Ah! Hmm. The floor. A clever mechanism. Uh, go downstairs, I guess. Uh. So this is the legendary secret cellar. Uh. Okay. The cellar continues on behind these bars. I can't see anything, but I bet that the book's in there somewhere. I'm willing to bet it has something to do with that stone figure over there. A small, fat figure. She's holding a mirror above her head. Looks ancient. Um, the mirror? A picture on a stone slab. It depicts a man in a robe with a staff in his hand. A jewel is glinting in the headpiece of the staff. Some sort of light beam shining on it. Look at stone figures. There are three carved figures by the bars. Each one of them has a different precious stone. This one here has a blue sapphire in its head. The spider has an emerald on its back, green. This figure looks a bit like a dog. One of its eyes is a large ruby. Okay. Look at the the junk. sad remains of extinct cultures and of the last camping trip. <laughs> All of it is like that um, garden shears. Guess even a secret cellar is in the end just a cellar, and all cellars have gardening tools such as these gardening shears. I could probably use them, though I don't know. As long know as I'm before. not expected to do the gardening now. Oh, that's probably exactly what I'm expected to do. Hey, that's the staff that was in the picture on the wall. About two meters long, and it has a top made of bronze. It's just the jewel that's missing. Take the staff. I bet the jewel's outside. And that's why I have the shears. Though, um, I think there was a monkey in that, uh, statue. Can't be certain, though. I don't believe it. Now I've ended up doing the gardening. <laughs> Heated up the house, made some coffee. Oh, it is a gravestone? You sure? A little gravestone made of granite that's got Kinski inscribed on it. Oh. A little gravestone made of granite that's got Kinski inscribed on it. Maybe I'm supposed to mix it. What? No. Or maybe. No. Um. Okay. So I need. Everything looked pretty. And now I just have to find a stone that I have no clue where it is. Hmm. 
I doubt the sarcophagus will be of much help, but you never know, right? Yoo-hoo! Do you know where I can find the jewel? I know you've never been down there, but there was a staff in the cellar, and there's a precious stone that belongs on the top of it, a ruby. Do you know where it is? But of course, Mortimer. You asked me to hide it for you. Don't you remember? Uh, I, I must have forgotten about that. No. Oh, what would you do without me? Could you please just give it to me? I just need it for a second. What? The jewel. And before you ask, I mean the stone that you put somewhere safe for mo me. And please don't tell me that you've forgotten. How could I forget that? You said it was very important that no one found the stone. Oh, okay. Now please can I have it back? Why would I give a complete and utter stranger Mortimer's stone? <sighs> Uh, but, but I, I am, am worried, Mortimer. Right? Oh, don't be ridiculous. You're too tall, too thin, too hairy, and you have those those things there. Huh? Um. Mortimer sent me. I'm a friend me. of Mortimer. He sent me to fetch something out of the cellar. I have never seen you here before, and I never forget a face. Right. Please, it's urgent. I do not know whether I can trust you. I would only give a really good friend of Mortimer's the jewel. Oh, jeez. That's geez. me. I saved his life. Well, maybe. Really? Hmm. If you are truly a good friend of Mortimer, then you will be able to give me the answer to the following question. Oh, no. What color is his underwear? Red. Red. He mostly wears red underwear. That's right! Red silk underwear. But I'm still not quite satisfied. So, what is his cat's name? Oh, God. Kinski! His cat died some while ago. Her gravestone's outside. Her name was Kinski. It was a tomcat. The poor thing is always so happy, playing with my bandages. Yes, very sad, very sad. But hopefully this proves that I am a good friend of old Mortimer, does it not? You have only answered one of my questions. I two? answered two. Uh, you asked me about his underwear. But why would his underwear be of any interest to me? Oh, come on, don't change the subject. Are you going to give me that jewel now? No, Please. not yet. I oh have no, I'm missing question. something, aren't I? What did Count Grunschfeld or Pieperbock say to his adjutant Henninger shortly before the Battle of Budleberg? What? Huh? Wrong. No, I just don't understand what you're talking about. I am a trifle unsure about this too. It is a bit like a coded question. And do you know the answer? Of course. Mortimer told me. And you haven't forgotten it? I... Um... Um... No. You have. So, what is the answer? Um... Um... He talked about an offer you can't refuse. I am your father, is what he said. The answer to your question is 234. Oh. I'll go with the middle Grinchfeld one. Grinchfeld made Henninger an offer that he couldn't refuse. Really? So, what did he offer him? Oh, God. He really made him an offer? No. What did Grunschfeld say to Henninger? Okay. I'm your father? He said... Henninger, I am your father. What nonsense. Hey. Can you see dead people? That was before the battle. No, 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 that's all wrong. Now tell me, what did he say to his adjutant? 
234, of course. Oh? Huh? What? 234. I know all about that. Mortimer told me many times. 234 what? Oh. He's 234 years old. You don't know, but you surely have to know that. Um... Let's go with that. The professor is 234 years old. I've answered your question. I asked that? Impossible. Mortimer just turned 63 on the 13th of July. So, <laughs> 234 what? Oh, man. It's the square root of 14,412. That um, is the square root of 14,412. Not even close. Oh, jeez. So, what was that about 234? Oh, God. Um, that is the answer. That's the answer to the question about life, the universe, and everything. Now that I know. So, what is all this about 234? So how you can anyone who is a good friend of Mortimer not know that? But how? What? 234. Mortimer never told you that. Well, yes. 234? So it turns out that you aren't such a good friend after all, then. If you don't even know anything about the 234. Oh. Oh, that. You mean that 234? Yes, exactly. Oh, With that thingy. Precisely. Oh, wow. Well. You are a good friend of old Mortimer's after all. Of course. Oh. Splendid. Now that you've proven that, can you give me the jewel? At last. Oh, hey, it worked. I finally got it. Many thanks. Uh, you're welcome. That was confusing. But, uh, he did in fact have it, so, uh, let's put it on the staff. Fits perfectly. Sweet. And let's go back downstairs. This portion of the prologues isn't all that hard compared to the last one. The last one I found really confusing. No, no, don't go there. Um. Um. Oh no. There's something else. Oh, the opening on the floor. It must be for that. And now. And now. I stand over here and. Small fat figure. And She's follow what that's doing. It. And I do and I do it with this. I think. I think, I think. No? Oh, come on. I'm definitely missing something. Maybe it has something to do with the mirror pieces. Hmm. Would appear to be a mirror frame. There are still a few broken shards of the old mirror around the edges. The mirror's turned so it reflects the fireplace. Strange. Oh, maybe I stick that there. Not quite as good as a real mirror, but I can see my reflection. Mm. Looking good, as usual. Okay, good to know. But, um, if I go back down there, will I have a light shining? No? Ugh. But I need a light shining. I can only see myself in a portion of the room in the improvised mirror. I need to... I can only see myself in a portion of the room in the improvised mirror. Well then, how do I fix that? I need... Oh! A strong suspicion that this thing's got something to do with that light beam drawing on the wall in the cellar. But as long as the shutter outside's closed, no light's going to reach that box. 
I guess I have to go outside and fix that then. But how? I bet that the light beam is meant to enter the house through that window. I just can't reach it. <sighs> now I need to figure out how to reach it. Well, I could take the staff and grab it with the staff. Because that's the only thing that I have left to use. That it'll still let me use. So... Let's try that, I guess. I think I'd better take the staff with me. It might come in handy elsewhere. Yep, that must be the thing that's used in order to uh, lift the shutter. It must be. There's nothing else. And then after that, I hope I find the book. Let's try it. There we go. Windows open. The last rays of sunlight can enter the house. Okay, so... Now... That should be good to stick the staff on the floor. And the beams of light are going where they're supposed to. So I should be able to open the door. Oh, if anyone in real life did any of this, it'd be nuts. Now I just have to readjust where the light goes. The light beam is reflected by the little figure's mirror, but it's simply shining onto the floor. Okay, so how do I fix that then? What do I do to fix the light? The light beam is reflected by the little figure's mirror, but it's simply shining onto the floor. There are strange marks on the figure's pedestal. Looks like the figure may have been turned. I've got to try and turn it back to its original position. Okay. Turn it. Turn it again. Turn it again. Ah! -ha -ha. Excellent. Sweet. Now I can read the book. This must be the secret book. Oh, it's been written by hand and there are several pictures. There are a few words written in orange ink. That doesn't exist, does it? The artifact of divine fate. This is serious. I should get this book to the Archmage as quick as I can. As long as I don't bump into the sorcerer or his troll, I should manage to make sea stone by midday tomorrow. <laughs> Shouldn't be a problem. Okay. Uh-oh. Oh. Uh, we've got a bit of a problem here. I might want to get out of here. That was melodramatic. I thought... Well, anticlimactic, I should say. I thought there was going to be more that was going to happen to that. But, uh... No. That's not the case at all. But, uh, now what's going to happen? Oh! We're outside! And I take it by the, the appearance of the ring that we're back as a gnome. Oh! Ouch! Should've used that parachute. Apparently the helmets disappeared too. Why are you staring like that? Never seen a town guard before? No. You... You're a human, aren't you? Me? Yes, uh... You could say that. Never been anything else. Wow. My name is Bartholomew Anton Shieldhand. Royal Town Guard of Seastone. And who are you? Um... <laughs> Call me Mr. Underhill. Ah, uh, more Lord of the Rings references. Uh, my name is Weathervane, Wilbur Weathervane. My name is Wilbrush Weatherwood, and I want to become a pirate. Um, I'll go with my Underhill. Name is Mr. Underhill. I'm 
I'm on a secret mission. Underhill. So so. Where where am I? This lovely seaside resort. Residence of the Archmage and home of the Sea Shanty Singers is Seastone. Oh hey, we made it. Then I made it! Absolutely, I'd say. And here's me thinking that the orcs were firing grunts at our walls again. I have to see the Archmage. It's urgent. <laughs> then I wish you the best of luck. The guard at the upper gate follows very strict procedures. He won't let you through to the Archmage that easily. Oh, of course. Um... What do you mean by upper town? Well, the town's divided into the upper town and the lower town. The Archmage's tower is, of course, in the upper town. And what's in the lower town? Taverns, shops, the common people's dwellings. Well, at least they used to live there. Not anymore. And then where do they live? Where are the town's inhabitants? Gone. Lots of them died when the town was besieged, and most of the survivors then went off with Gustav the Handsome to take revenge. That was rather... less than successful. And how many people are still living here? Not so many anymore. If the Archmage hadn't had his tower here, the town would have probably been abandoned. Sounds pretty sad. But things will get better. Wait until we win the war and everyone comes back. Well, those that are still alive. Yeah, I guess uh, it'd be good if they were uh, still alive. Let's uh, plug them. Peter back here. Uh, why are you guarding this town when there's but if nobody no that's one lives here? here? Who are you guarding? Oh, I'm not guarding the inhabitants, I'm guarding the town. I'm guarding it like my father did before me and his father before him. But not his father, he was a blacksmith. But his brother-in-law was a town guard, and his father was a baker. Interesting. So, the Archmage is, the Archmage is in town? even in his tower at the moment? I'm not allowed to give out any information on that subject. Those are the regulations. Can you tell me anything about the Archmage? Do you know him personally? Of course I know him. The Seastone Town Guard is also responsible for protecting the Archmage. Why does he need protection if he's as powerful as everyone says? Well, he's not uh, exactly the greatest of warriors. No? No. He's uh, more strange. He thinks about stuff, you know. Strange? Why does he do that? Who knows? Who knows? I have to go. I'll get in to see the Archmage one way or another. Well, I never. I have to get back to my post too. My break's over. So, Mr. Underwood, on a secret mission. Best of luck on your adventure. We'll no doubt bump into each other again. Thanks, Mr. Shieldhand. See you later. He's like a pleasant... He seems like a pleasant tower guard. Though he walks kind of funny. But, uh, since we're here, I might as well end off the episode about here, since, uh, who knows how long this portion will take me. I hope you've enjoyed it thus far, and that, uh, I've improved some. So, uh, yeah. Have a good day, guys.